In this video, we're gonna take a look at three vintage Leica film camera lenses on digital camera, both micro four thirds and full frame. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto. I'm a photographer and a Lumix ambassador from Helsinki, Finland. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at three classic vintage Leica film camera lenses and how they perform on a digital camera, both full frame and micro four thirds. And I still have this very annoying flu going on and that's why I sound like this. I'm really sorry about that. These three lenses that I have, uh, they are not mine, they are on loan from camerastore.com. So if you are looking for a vintage camera lens or a camera, take a look at their website. They have a really amazing selection there and they deliver all over the world. And the three lenses that I have are the Leica Elmarit R 35mm f2.8, Sumicron R, 50 millimeter f2 and macro Elmar R 100 millimeter f4. None of these lenses is a super exotic, super fast lens, but these lenses together form a version of uh, the classic film era kit that many photographers had, like a standard kit, a moderate wide angle, standard and a short telephoto. And all these lenses have the precious like a red dot and they are also uh, quite reasonably priced for Leica lenses. And the cameras that I used are the Lumix G9 Micro Four Thirds camera and the Lumix S1 full frame camera. And both cameras of course had uh, a, an adapter to be able to use the uh, film camera R lenses. Here is some technical information of each lens. The build quality feels really super and every lens feels really nice and tight even after all these years. And every lens also feels a little bit heavy for their size, but that's because there is no plastic, at least no plastic visible, there's only metal and glass. The 35 millimeter is a little bit uh, big uh, for what it is or compared to other film lenses with similar specifications. But the 50 millimeter and the 100 millimeter are pretty much normal size and weight for what they are. Both the 35 and 100 have a collapsible lens hood. On a short telephoto it used to be a pretty standard feature, but on a Wide angle lens, it's a pretty rare feature to have a collapsible lens hood. But nonetheless, it's a very convenient feature. You always have your lens hood and it's very easy to use it or not to use it. And the 50 millimeter has this snap on lens hood that can be reversed on the lens for transportation. And the 100 millimeter, even though it says macro on the lens, it's not really a real macro. It only goes to one to three magnification ratio. But I think there is a dedicated extension ring or uh, some sort of macro adapter that uh, goes with the lens because there are second markings on the lens uh, barrel or the focus ring uh, with different um, uh, magnification ratio markings and uh, that suggests that there is some sort of adapter that uh, would deliver the proper one-to-one -one true macro magnification ratio. And now's the time for my first set of sample pictures shot on the Lumix G9 Micro Four Thirds camera. And after these pictures we're gonna look at the sharpness of these lenses and then I have another set of uh, sample pictures shot on the Lumix S1 full frame camera. Enjoy the pictures.
the sharpness on a Micro Four Thirds camera is much more uniform from corner to corner compared to a full frame camera because the small Micro Four Thirds sensor crops only a small portion in the middle of the image circle where the image quality or the sharpness is the best. So what I'm going to say applies more to a full frame camera than a Micro Four Thirds camera. And not even all the full frame cameras are the same. Different cameras can have different types of filters and protective glass on the sensor and the thickness of the filter and the protective glass affects the corner sharpness uh, with the classic film camera lenses. The 35 is already really sharp in the middle, even wide open, but to get even sharpness from corner to corner, you have to go uh, to about f11. So if you shoot landscapes or something and you want also the extreme corners to be sharp, you have to stop down to about f11. But if you shoot something like environmental portraits, you can use the widest f2.8 aperture because the, the mid part of the frame is really sharp already, wide open. The 50 millimeter is probably the nicest of the three. Wide open, it's, uh, it's quite sharp from corner to corner, but the contrast is a little bit lower and uh, the pictures have this really nice soft tonality in them. Uh, but when you stop down to about 5.6 f8 range, you get really nice crisp uh, sharp results corner to corner, even on a full frame camera. But I really wanted to shoot only wide open on this lens because I think the pictures just uh, came out so nice. The 100 is the sharpest of the three. And I think this lens is <laughs> pretty amazing considering it only has four elements in three groups. Uh, there's almost no chromatic aberrations and um, all in all the image quality is stunning uh, for such a simple design. And now the second set of sample pictures shot on the Lumix S1 full frame camera. And after these pictures, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the focusing on manual, uh, on film camera lenses and my conclusion. And I'm also gonna tell which one of these lenses was my favorite. Enjoy the pictures. Hope you like the pictures and before I talk about the manual focusing please also consider to subscribe to my channel and tap the bell there so you'll get a notification whenever I post a new video and if you like this video you can always buy me a cup of coffee there's also a link down below for that and now about the focusing the viewfinder on both these cameras is really nice and I had no difficulties um, with, um, with the manual focusing. However, the viewfinder on the S1 is superior to the G9 or any other, pretty much any other camera. And uh, manual focusing is uh, so easy and convenient and relatively fast and also accurate on this camera. It's not bad uh, experience on the G9 either, but when you uh, use these cameras side by side, you will see that there's a, a, a big difference. These three lenses together, like I said at the beginning of this video, they form the classic film era standard lens kit that covers pretty much every normal shooting situation, or at, le at, or at least it used to cover back then. Uh, photographers today probably uh, want something wider than 35 millimeter. But anyway, you could shoot a lot of things with these three lenses together with a full frame camera. On a Micro Four Thirds camera, the 
image quality is, is still of course good and you get really nice results but I think the usefulness of these three lenses is not uh, so good and they are not so attractive on a micro four thirds camera because they are all, all telephoto lenses but that is just my opinion and uh, if you're happy with only telephoto lenses then of course uh, these uh, three Leica lenses are very nice also on a on a micro four thirds camera. The price for these lenses is around 350 euros or equivalent amount of US dollars but of course it depends on the condition of the lens because all these lenses are used today of course and you can find similar film camera vintage lenses for much less but I still think these lenses are uh, pretty reasonably priced for Leica lenses and my favorite of the three is by far the 50mm f2 Summicron R mainly because uh, the pictures come out so pretty at the wide open f2 aperture but of course a 50mm mounted on a full frame camera is a very versatile lens you can shoot almost anything on a 50 you can shoot street you can shoot portraits you can shoot landscape almost anything and here's my video where I'll share some tips on how to use manual focus lenses on a Lumix camera you may want to check it out after this one and thank you again for joining in and I'll see you in the next one